My demo is about my web part that I created, about uh, building a Microsoft Graph People Search web part. So we'll start first with the why of this web part. Basically, uh, how every web part starts or everything that you build is because you have a need and there's nothing else in the community that solves it. So you start building it yourself. And first of all, um, what I normally use to show user profiles or um, a who is who on an intranet, on the SharePoint intranet, were the PMP modern search um, web parts that showed all of the profiles in a nice way, looking similar to the people web part that's out of the box available in SharePoint. Um, the problem is that with the PMP modern search is based on SharePoint user profiles. And with this, in this specific case, um, the user profiles had incorrect and incomplete data. Basically, when you have a user account in Azure Active Directory and that user logs in into SharePoint, it gets a user profile created. But then afterwards, if you disable that account or you uh, tweak something and you do not remove the account uh, from Azure Active Directory, the user profile still exists. And um, that's a problem in environments where they like to keep their disabled accounts uh, around for a certain amount of time. So as a result, their user profiles in SharePoint still contain those profiles and they get shown on the who is who. And that's probably not what you want to do. Um, you could try and filter it with custom properties, but then again, not all properties from Azure Active Directory are synchronized into Azure Active Directory. So I went looking out for a way to show the users from Microsoft Graph. Graph provides the ability to filter and uh, limit the search query just to those user profiles that you want to show. Now, my requirements for this web part were that it has to show the person card or the people card from Office UI Fabric React, now Fluent UI library. Um, it has to render the whole list of users on pay, uh, page load. It has to be configurable in the search query, so I can say, um, give me only the enabled accounts or only those from a specific department. I wanted to allow additional free text search, so you could provide a set of 100 user profiles and let people search again in there to limit the result set. Preferably, it showed the live person card on hover, so I introduced that as well. Um, and it sh should be based on Microsoft Graph, like I said, because that one um, allows me to achieve everything that I want. Now, looking at the web part itself, this is how it ended up. Um, so on the page, it shows you a certain amount of uh, user profiles that are uh, fetched through a query. And uh, it also shows you the results or the number of results. And I recently added pagination support as well. So um, on first load, it shows you the first set of user profiles from the query that you configured. And then you, uh, it's possible to page through all of the uh, pages that are returned from Microsoft Graph. So if we go to the next page, you will see a small loader like this. But if you then return back to a previous screen, it goes very fast because it keeps the previous result sets in memory. Only when you move to an additional uh, page, it will refetch or do a, a query again to Microsoft Graph. Now, for those people that are um, paying attention, you'll see that there is a small bug in here that I uh, saw uh, when preparing this demo, it's as soon as you move to a second page or a third page, this undefined results uh, shows up. It's something that I reported to the graph team and we're discussing whether it's my mistake or their mistake. So we'll see um, uh, how that uh, ends up. And then about the live pers uh, person card or persona card, it's basically the feature where you hover over uh, a user account and it pops out the out of the box um, experience or profile card. You can also click on it and then it will open up the bigger, um, like the bigger persona card. Just a, a reminder here that this is a, a component that's made available or well, that's in SharePoint Online and we're not supposed to use it in our custom development. So um, just so you know, I included it because it was a client uh, request. But if you're not comfortable with using this in your own uh, solutions or, or uh, when you use this web part, I've also got a toggle 
to, um, to turn it off. Now, if you look at the features, when we go edit this web part, you see that I put everything into four categories. First of all, there is this um, query settings that allow you to provide the select parameter, the filter parameter, and the order by parameter values, like you would do on, on any graph query. So if you see that we limit, for example, the select parameter value, you will see that this gets updated and some of the, well, if my internet wants, so some of the uh, properties I did not fetch at the moment, so that uh, it doesn't get rendered uh, now. So if we update the select query to all of the necessary properties, you will see that they get filled in again. Now we can also filter on rather simple um, filters like this one, and it just filters on job title. Um, this time it's IT, and now it's on uh, teacher, and then it returns 10 values. You can also do more complex uh, queries as long as they're supported um, by Microsoft Graph. So you could do department equals HR or department equals finance for any account that's um, enabled. It doesn't return any results now, but uh, you get the, the point here. And then there's also the order by parameter value. Now, this one uses the user endpoint of Microsoft Graph, and it only supports uh, sorting or order by on display name or user profile name. Just so you know, even though you can fill in whatever you want, if you put in another property, it just returns uh, ordering is not allowed on this property. And you can limit the number of items per page as well. Now, looking at the search parameter option, this one is recently introduced at Microsoft Graph at the beta endpoint, and it allows you to do a full text search on the display name. Um, there are four options. There is none, and that's the ability to do a static filtering where you say, let's get all Alex's um, in here. Then it's just filtered like that. Um, you could question why you would do that. You probably will want to put that in the uh, filter parameter in, inside the query uh, part, but you can also have a built-in search box. So if you have the search box, you can do the filtering in here as well. Um, not sure, let's see if there is a Shelly, no. So um, so this is the, uh, the result in here. So you can get a, a search box like Adele, and then you filter here as well. You can clear the search query and it returns again. And then the last one, that's available is dynamic data. So you can connect any other source. This time I only have the page environment on my page to provide dynamic inputs into this uh, web art. In terms of styling, there's the ability to turn on or off the pagination. So let's say you only want to show the first nine results, uh, turn off pagination and you cannot uh, go to the next page. Um, the ability to show or hide the results count, as long as this bug is here, you probably want to turn it off. Um, enable the show live persona card, yes or no. And then there's a, the ability to debug the uh, results that you get from Microsoft Graph. So if you switch to the debug mode, you can see everything that's returned um, and uh, work with this. Now, the last one is the templating options. It's, it allows you to tweak the size of uh, the persona card and also manage the persona fields. So this persona card has a, a field for user principal name and four lines of text that you can fill in and you just enter the property name that returns from Microsoft Graph and it will be uh, rendered in these four lines on the page. In terms of improvements, the one thing that it doesn't do yet because I haven't had time is fetching the user profile pictures. So it's on my to-do list for uh, somewhere in the future. Now, switching over to how I did this um, or how I built this, uh, I'm not going to show the code in Visual Studio Code. Um, I have a tendency to click around too much and make it uh, uh, very difficult to follow along. So I just highlighted some of the code snippets that are very interesting or, or I believe interesting is the first one is that I put everything from search in a search service. So all my services um, are separate. And one of the actions in my search service is to execute the actual search. And this is where um, 
I return a page collection of all Microsoft Graph users. So first of all, I get a client from the uh, Microsoft Graph client factory. This is built in into the context of your report. And there you can uh, get the client factory and get the client. And then you can build your own query. So the first action is to tell uh, the Graph client which endpoint you want to use. So in this, uh, I want to use slash users because all of my users are located in there and which version of the uh, graph you want to use. And I'm doing beta endpoint um, because this uh, paging and search uh, parameter is only available in the beta endpoint at the moment. Then um, I say that it has to return the count and how much items it has to return at the first uh, request. And then this is one thing that I uh, struggled with because the documentation isn't so clear um, for this. But basically, if you want to use search or do some advanced order by mechanisms or to account, you have to provide an additional header of consistency level eventual. It's somewhere in the back end, um, a way that they fetch or prefetch their data. And it might be that if you use this and search that it doesn't always um, include or return all of the results that are available um, in your user profile or your user's endpoint normally. And then I just apply additional queries. If there is a select parameter, I provide it. If there is a filter option provided in the webport properties, I add it to the result query and the same goes for the order by parameter. The special one is the search parameter because of the fact that what's built in in types and um, in functionality in the SharePoint framework isn't the beta um, uh, code of uh, Microsoft Graph. So you have to provide the query itself and say which parameter that you want to uh, provide a value for. And in this case, I provide my search parameter for display name, and then I execute the request. The second one, is for the fetch paging because I want to fetch the next page um, and the next page is returned in your first result as a complete URL. So it's a, a complete URL, the same one that I used before with a count and a top 10 um, and a skip token to skip the first set of results and get the next one. And there, the thing is that you um, can inject this whole URL in the API method. So you do graphclient.api, you put in the whole URL, and you still have to provide the dot header consistency eventual because of the fact that you still want to return the count and the search and everything that you provided in here as well. And this is where we have a discussion with the graph team because if you do this on the paging, it doesn't, even though it contains count is true and it works on the first request, it doesn't work on the page request. It doesn't return the count value at the moment. And then there is the, um, the container itself that renders a page. The difficulty there was to keep all of the results in memory. So first of all, I'm keeping a state of all my results, which is a, an array of all the pages uh, collection with the user values in there. Whether or not we're loading uh, stuff, error messages, if it has an error and the current page that's being loaded. The page collection is a generic interface, so we can provide any uh, graph uh, uh, object, and it provides a value with an array of users in this case, the next link, the previous link, uh, count, and some uh, dynamic properties, if you'd like. Now, that's important to understand because of this code, which is quite complex. Um, if we fetch the people results, we do it for a specific page, and we check if it's a full reset or not. We need to do a reset when we change the uh, web art properties. So first of all, first section, quite simple. If page is one and it's a reset, reload uh, the information. Also do execute this part when there are no results in the state, when the state first results are empty or when there's nothing in the value, just fetch it again. We put it on loading and then we uh, fetch the first request. Every result that re uh, that's returned is an, um, a page collection of Microsoft Graph, and we put it in the results property of the state, and we put the page at one. Now, if we move to the second page, we check here if we have fetched um, already that page or not. So we check results length is one, the page we're requesting is two minus one, so it's one equals one. 
So we check, does there, is there a next page? If there is a next page, we load again and we provide the next, we fetch the next link from the last uh, result from the state. We execute the search results for the fetch page. We get data and we merge the existing data with the new one that's returned. Now, if we already had uh, page two uh, requested, it would mean that our length would be two, our page would be two minus one. It's not equal. So we skip this one. We are not fetching it again, and we just update the page to being two. That's interesting because when we do the render, that's one in here, we can just use the page in the state to fetch the correct page collection from the state put it in an items property and use that one to render all of the results. This allows me to keep everything in memory, go forward and backwards between all of the uh, results because the Microsoft Graph does not return this previous link. It only has next links. As soon as you're in page two, you cannot go back by requesting it from Graph again. You have to keep it in memory. And that brings me to the end. I just want to show the resources. So I blogged about this on my blog. Um, the code is on the GitHub. My GitHub is the most recently um, up to date because I've been tweaking it this week. Uh, the ver there's an older, slightly older version in the samples uh, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, I'm sure that Hugo will uh, keep it up to date somewhere in the future. And then there's this um, Microsoft Graph documentation in the beta endpoint that describes all of this uh, consistency level uh, eventual stuff. All right. Thank you very much. Great, Yannick. Fantastic demo. Excited to see that. Really good stuff.